On 27 September 2023, physicists at the Alpha experiment in CERN reported studies which supported the notion that antimatter particles behave in a similar way as normal matter in a gravitational field by testing anti-hydrogen. After weakening the magnetic fields at the top and bottom of the container where antimatter is trapped, most of them were detected at the bottom, ruling out a possible repulsive gravitational interaction of the Earth and antimatter atoms. But why was antimatter suspected to have a repulsive gravitational interaction? Repulsive gravitational interaction, also called anti-gravitational interactions, are related to negative masses. Negative mass has been theoretically studied since Newton's law of gravity, mainly due to its similarity with Columbus's law and the fact that the latter applies to different sign charges. But negative masses have never been observed. Newton's law of gravity for two negative masses results in the same forces as the positive masses case, but considering Newton's second law of motion results in opposite accelerations and thus anti-gravity. This follows from the equivalence principle, which states that gravitational masses are equal to inertial masses. The problem arises when considering the interaction between two particles of different mass signs, in which the negative mass chases the positive mass, accelerating both, presumably, up to the speed of light. This has been regarded as the paradox of the runaway motion. Although for any value of mass, both energy and momentum are conserved, this interaction gives rise to paradoxes like infinite energy sources and perpetual motion machines. In general relativity, choosing the active gravitational mass in the Schwarzschild solution negative results in the approximation of the Newtonian case of repulsion for test particles. As a constant of integration, the active gravitational mass can take any arbitrary sign and general relativity does not prohibit the existence of negative masses. These negative masses, or exotic matter, have been used to support solutions such as traversable wormholes and warp drives which also give rise to paradoxes like time machines or casualty-breaking phenomena. William B. Bonner showed that these problems, such as violations of causality in general relativity, occur only if both positive and negative masses are present. Another argument against negative masses follows that if negative masses coexist with positive masses, they would trigger a vacuum decay. This problem arises because negative energies are also forced to exist, and pairs of negative and positive energies would arise from a net zero energy space in infinite numbers, which would make the vacuum unstable. This is again the case for gravitational masses being equal to inertial and rest masses by the equivalence principle. Although there are proposals in which the equivalence principle only holds up to a sign, the arguments shown before and especially the self-accelerating runaway motion are usually used to support the idea that negative masses should not follow the predicted Newtonian or general relativity interaction for gravitational masses being equal to inertial masses, but an analogous interaction to the electrostatic force. Like masses attract and unlike masses repel. This interaction, which is the same as considering inertial masses always positive and allowing gravitational masses to be negative in Newtonian gravity and thus, Giving up Einstein's equivalence principle matches the interaction of a spin to field from quantum field theory, although there is no evidence for gravity to be a force mediated by a quantum field. As shown before, all theoretical problems with negative masses only take place regarding the interaction between positive and negative masses for the case in which the equivalence principle holds and negative masses repel each other. But why would antimatter have negative mass? Negative masses imply negative energies through the energy and mass equivalence. It is obvious that antimatter has positive energy and mass because annihilation between a matter particle and its antimatter counterpart, both with same absolute values of energy independently if antimatter has negative energy results in a positive energy outcome. If antimatter had negative energy and thus negative mass, the outcome of annihilation would be zero for energy conservation to hold. The suspicion lies in quantum mechanics. Dirac found negative energy particle solutions in his development of a relativistic theory of quantum mechanics. 
The solution for antiparticles in the Dirac equation is achieved through the feynman stuckelberg interpretation, which consists of a change from negative energies to positive energies, in which time must also be shifted from negative to positive for consistency of the first term of the phase of the wave function, and also momentum must be shifted from positive to negative. Thus, negative energy solutions with negative time, particles moving backwards in time, can be interpreted as positive energy solutions with positive time, particles moving forward in time which have their charge shifted. But what if there were negative time regions of space-time? Would particles have negative energies and masses and thus repulsive gravitational interactions at them? The same result for negative energies is achieved in special relativity. The anti-Kronos transformations of the full Lorentz group are arbitrarily thought to be non-physical. And special relativity is based on the proper orthochronos transformations or restricted Lorentz group dealing only with positive energies and positive times. An anti kronos lorentz transformation changes the sign to the time component of all four vectors for a particle on the energy momentum space, changing a positive energy particle moving forwards in time to a negative energy particle moving backwards in time. If relativistic observers can only explore their casually connected space-time along the positive time axis, a reinterpretation of these negative energy particles moving backwards in time can be done so that they are observed as positive energy particles traveling forward in time. But if the space-time where these negative energy particles exist only contains negative energy particles and observers moving backwards in time and no observation from positive time observers can be performed, this reinterpretation cannot take place. In summary, if antimatter had negative mass and gravity was mediated by a spin 2 field, antihydrogen would have not fallen to earth, but this interaction does not agree with the Newtonian gravity and general relativity prediction and contradicts Einstein's equivalence principle in the Newtonian case. According to Newtonian gravity and general relativity, if antimatter had negative mass, it would still fall to Earth. But this interpretation of the gravitational interaction is inconsistent due to the runaway motion. The alpha experiment at CERN does not exclude the existence of matter with negative energy and mass, which would be the negative time and negative energy solution of Dirac's equation and also does not prove that gravity follows the electromagnetic analog interaction of a spin-2 field. Where could negative masses with negative time have a physical meaning in our universe? The answer is a place in which that interaction with positive masses could not take place. A region of space-time causally disconnected to ours, which has positive time. The only place matching this description are the interior of black holes. It is also straightforward from Penrose singularity theorems that introducing negative masses is the simplest way to avoid gravitational singularities in the interior of black holes. Could a time transformation take place at the event horizon? This topic will be discussed in a future video.